Well, I was born in Dallas. We lived in Mineola and moved from Mineola to Huntsville, then from Huntsville to Cisco out near Abilene, then from Cisco to Jacksonville where I graduated high school, then Jacksonville to Tyler, Tyler Junior College, that's where I got in the radio business. Where I got my first full-time radio job was KNUZ Radio here in Houston. Uh, then I became the news director of that news department before I came here to Channel 13. I was hired as the first on-the-street reporter this television station ever had. I became the ninth member of the news team. And in January of 67, they wanted to put me on the 7 a.m. news. Frankly, I didn't even know we had a 7 a.m. news at the time. In July of 1968, they moved me and hired uh, another man named Dan Ammerman and put us together to anchor the 6 and the 10 o'clock newscast. And I've been on the 6 and 10 since July of 1968. Something happens in Houston in the middle of the night. I remember when we first started out, he used to ride with the police at night. He'd get done doing the... 10 o'clock news and, and take off with the cops and ride with them throughout the night. I like that. Uh, I can get out on the street, talk with the people, see what they're thinking. It was right about this spot that the eye of the storm first... If it happened in Houston, if it was a hurricane, he remembered what it was like to begin with. You couldn't just drag up a fact about a former storm without knowing what you're talking about, because Dave remembered. I don't know what we're going to be able to do about that. <laughs> I was Dave Ward's first female co-anchor, and uh, we co-anchored the 6 o'clock news together. Dave takes the news very seriously. He is first and foremost a professional. What may have been a joke to two adults was not funny at all. To the he's not theatrical, he's not phony, and he's consistent. So if anything, I think his passion might be in his dependability and his consistency. Television news is pictures of the people that made that news. He always had in his mind, I think brilliantly so, the fact that uh, he was going to be held responsible for what was right and what was wrong. He demands professionalism around him, but he's willing to give it himself, and he can lead with that. He is very serious about getting the story right, getting the pictures right. I think it's his attention to detail, and it's something that uh, uh, I think wears off on all of us. He makes all of us work harder and be better to try and keep pace with him. We have a tremendous responsibility to try to ensure to our utmost capability that what we put on the air is right, is truth. But he also taught me you can have a lot of fun while you're doing it. Some great teams rode together, the Daltons, the James Brothers, and now the fastest moving team in all the Southwest. Ooh. Howdy, partners! There was one day we had rain, and it was time to go to the weather, and I said, now let's check on the weather. It, it rained today, and Ed Brandon is going to tell us why. And he looked at me, and he said, well, that's because water fell from the sky today, David. We have a picture that was taken in Boston, Massachusetts, over the weekend, and uh, this just so shows that it is still snowing in the northeastern part of the country. So we had fun with the weather, and it was, it was a good time, especially when nothing else was happening, to uh, joke around and have some fun. What people probably don't know about him is how funny he is, and you get a little glimpse of that when he does his kicker every night at the end of the newscast. And before we go tonight, how would you like to have your very own police car, and you don't even have to graduate from the academy? Oh my gosh, Dave and the kicker. The way he would just, you know, put a button on the newscast by telling a story that touched people or entertained them and somehow disconnected in some way. But if a police car isn't on your wish list, how about an old stoplight? More than 70 used traffic lights will be sold. But what would you do with one of those? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun to watch Dave read his kicker because I can see he gets a kick out of it himself every night. <laughs> I would describe him in one word, solid. That every single night when that light goes on, Dave Ward's gonna give you his best. And I'm just thrilled that he is being recognized in this manner because I've thought from the very beginning that Dave had all the qualities of being a legendary news anchor. Being able to work with Dave Ward for 37 and a half years has been a golden, rich experience. Dave is, is more than a, a co-anchor. Dave has always been part of my family, part of me, like a big brother that I knew I could always turn to. I cannot think of a finer man and a greater guy and a pure journalist 
to receive this award. When, when they told me that this had happened, I, I had no idea. I didn't even tell you the truth. I remember Marvin being inducted into the Silver Circle and Troy Dungan, who used to do the weather here, who was the first weather guy when I first went on the 6 and 10 o'clock newscast. And then looking at the other people who've been inducted into this circle, it, it does, it makes me very proud. And it, it, and I'm, it, it fills me with humility, really, that uh, my peers would accept me for what I've done. I never imagined doing this this long, no, and especially not in the same place. But I never got offered another job, so I'm still here, stuck in the same damn dead-end job, you know. Are you still looking for a job? No, no, no. We welcome Dave Ward into the silver circle of the Lone Star Emmy chapter of the National Television Academy.